wanted. Good morning. How's it going? Pretty good. How about yourself? Good. It's a uh, stormy day. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's supposed to be really stormy the next few days. And um trying to debate whether I should be driving up to Big Bear tonight or tomorrow morning and everybody up their mountains saying, if you only have liability insurance, don't even bother going up. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> I saw someone that. post that uh, it's not, it, they haven't gotten that much snow yet. No, it's supposed, I mean, up there, they're supposed to get up to five feet predicted by the end of the system. And it looks uh -huh. like it's like ongoing throughout the weekend. So I'm not really sure. I don't know. You know, it's like you could, the weather can make a big noise about it. And then when the storm is gone, you only get a couple of inches or vice versa. <laughs> yeah, that's what it's, it sounds like. It's only been a couple of inches up there, maybe. I know. Hey, Travis. It's Brett. Hey, Brett. How's it going? Good. Um, is anybody else presenting on your team today that I need to add? Co-host. All right, can you hear me? All right, there you are. Yeah. Um, so Justin will be presenting the slides. Um, I'll be talking, and then John Lowell and Paul will be talking as well. Okay. Let's see. There's John. And then John Azalone, he's doing some sales stuff for him, but we'll just be a contact. Okay. Hey, can you guys hear me now? This is John Lowell. Yep. Okay. And this is Paul. What panelist? Justin's on as well. It looks like it, yes. Should I be a panelist then? Yeah, you're going to get sharing. over there. Okay. So Justin's going to run the slides? Yep. Okay. Let's see. If you want to give that a shot, you can for a screen share. It's um, not giving it. me options right now. Okay, hold on a second. I promoted you to co-host. That should take care of that. Does it give you the option to uh, screen share now? Let's see here. Not yet. Let's see here. Host, yeah, you should you should have that option um, on the bar um, at the well, it might be at the top or bottom of your screen. If I say new share or share, it's, a, it's just like I'm like locked out, you know. We see the options in the request. So I have a request remote control. Uh, yeah, go for that. I just put in another setting. There you go. 
It's saying I can't control your screen, unfortunately. Yeah, uh, well, that's, that's all right. Here we go. No, I got it. Good. Okay. So you should be able to share screen. All right, we're just about 9.02. We're just going to get the screen share working. And um, today, oh, geez, my video. Okay, so uh, today we have uh, Brett Burge and team. He is the CEO of Burge Construction. Uh, they are based out of uh, San Clemente, is that correct? That's correct. Um, all right. So, um, I mean, you guys have been around forever, uh, family owned business, you guys specialize in commercial, uh, real estate and, uh, what else, what else, uh, do you specialize in? And, um, I guess what are we covering today? Yeah. So today, first off, thanks for having us. Um, uh, yeah. we were a second generation company. My father started the company back in 1977. So we went from residential, custom uh, custom residential spec homes, uh, kind of you name it, in Southern California to commercial. And then we added telecommunications, so cell towers. Um, and then now we're, we're pivoting because of the business model uh, with entry into the energy storage space. So it's a combination of our expertise basically in commercial, and telecommunications. It really looks like a telecommunications site without the towers. Okay. Um, so it's a perfect fit, but uh, kind of a differentiator for us in the market now on the energy side is bringing all that knowledge from the commercial background and real estate and development background to fit more of a mold for our clients rather than just selling a product or selling you know more of an investment in back into your company, uh, presenting opportunities for companies that they might not have seen. Um, so that's kind of the pivot for us and, and differentiator for us in the market. So it's kind of an exciting deal for us right now. Um, yeah. So, so yeah. energy costs, I know, are, uh, you know, a hot topic right now and with everything just kind of skyrocketing. So, yeah, and they're not going backwards. So. <laughs> I don't That's, think they're going to go backwards either. No, <laughs> no. So we're we're trying to get ahead of it, and and you know we're we're basically it's it's not resiliency. It's not for if the grid necessarily just goes down. It's it's more of a an opportunity to save costs on the business owner's side. So that's really what we're driving is, you know, cutting energy bills down so you can add you know more production to a business, um, and a lot of it's going to be based around manufacturing and. And, and stuff, but we're kind of uncovering different niches as we go um, and doing case studies on different different niches as as far as, you know, who's who's the best fit, you know, who's going to, you know, earn more from the opportunity. Okay. So um, let's see, is, uh, is the screen share working, Justin? I think so. Okay. Let's say let's go ahead and get that uh, rolling. And then I'll probably have some questions maybe as we go. Um, the yeah. chat is open. If anybody has any questions along the way, um, we can get them answered live. Um, but otherwise, I say let's let's get into it because uh, I, I want to see how many of my clients this might apply to. So yeah, <laughs> likewise. You able to see that, Brett? No, uh, yeah. not yet. I cannot see anything, Justin. Hmm. Worst comes to worst, I'll, I think I might be able to. Wait, here we go. All right. We there can we now go. see the screen. Okay. Okay. So as as I spoke, you know, Burge Construction, uh, we've been around for a while, but I've, I've also, you know, got the team on, on here. So uh, Justin, if you want to just go to the next slide real quick. So myself, uh, Brett Burge, uh, I own Burge Construction. And what we're doing is looking at pivoting to Burge Energy. 
So that will be the branding, hopefully moving forward here in the next uh, couple months. Um, Justin, he's the one manning the slides. He's helping with operations uh, for Burge Construction as well as Burge Energy. And then John Lowell, he's doing the engineering stuff behind designing the systems, uh, you know, basically doing all the calcs that are needed for each client. And then Paul, he is our uh, feasibility guy, our, our market feasibility, projects feasibility. Um, so running the numbers, proposals, uh, a lot of the financial stuff, uh, making sure that it's geared correctly towards you know each individual client. Because like I said, it's more solutions based. So it's not a plug and play for everyone. So it's going to be case by case. And that, you know, with our background in construction is, is what it's driving towards. And then also on the call is, uh, I think we've got John Aslone. He's going to be our point of contact for sales. Um, so at the end of the slide, we have some, some contact info as well for anybody who wants to reach out. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So uh, just... Just again, too, I, I I know that we've got a lot of, uh, I, I believe, um, Travis, from what you were saying, a lot of residential brokers um, on your end. So it, it might not seem like it's geared towards, red, towards residential, but what we're trying to do is just basically introduce everybody to the market because it is fairly new on the battery side, the, the solar side, not necessarily. But the commercial stuff does apply to residential at a larger scale so it really is dependent on your energy bill and you'll see that in a couple of slides that uh, john will discuss so take in mind that this is you know more commercial based but it does apply to residential um, but just as an overview i believe that you know with the brokers that i'm working with locally here we're helping them kind of with the tools that they need to get a leg up with their competition uh, in the space. So I think as much information as you guys can grab from this and likewise, you know, you can, you can always reach out and, and ask more questions, but I think it's a, it's a good opportunity to, to understand what's coming. Cause like we said, mm -hmm. energy costs aren't going away. So it's a, it's a good, a good tool to have in your, in your belt on your belt. Yeah. So, um, so with that, um, I'll pass it off to John. He's on the next slide. I'll let him go from there. All right. Yes, hello, everybody. I'm John Lowell. I uh, spent the last eight or 10 years in engineering and executive roles in the energy storage space and am joining with Burge Construction to essentially take their expertise in construction and telecom. They've got all the skill set, and I'm essentially helping them develop and extend their business into the, into the energy storage space. Uh, one of the key things to understand when you look at this from, you know, someone who's advising or working in the commercial space is why does PV and storage make sense for commercial applications? And, and there's a lot of reasons for the people say, well, it's resiliency. It keeps the lights on, the power goes out. It, it saves the planet. We're going green. You know, it saves me some money. You know, there, there's a lot of reasons, you know, people look at this, but when you look at it in commercial applications, it's really all about saving money. You will get some resiliency benefits out of this. You will get some green initiative benefits out of this to make you feel good. But the reality of this is this, you approach renewable energy, PV storage for commercial applications. It's about saving money. And one of the key things is in some areas, you can save a lot of money. Some areas, it's not worth doing. To understand that Southern California right now is one of the best places, if not the best place in the US to save money with PV and storage projects. High utility rates are raising quickly. I mean, I saw a thing just a week ago, PG&E was asking for a 16% increase in the next year or two. I mean, the rates are going up markedly in California. You got very good solar conditions and you got very generous federal state initiative programs. They'll pay for 35% or more of the cost of the system. I mean, with just the 1st of January with the Inflation Reduction Act and the incentives for renewables uh, and California's matching of those, uh, California is one of the best places to get incentive programs. So when you start looking at this, understand that not everybody's gonna save money. Uh, if you don't save money, you can look at this for resiliency or green initiatives or whatever, but most 
commercial people are going to do this about saving money. And so you can do a very quick look at people that you can save typically with these programs 40 to 60% of utility bills and get return on investments of less than five years for people that have these kind of following traits. If you look at your customers, moderate to high utility usage, you got to be using a fair amount of power or it doesn't really pay. And that's really power bills greater than 3,000 a month. Power bills greater than 5,000 a month, you really start getting into the sweet spot. But you know, less than 3,000 a month, it's going to be doubtful that you're going to get a really good return. Over 5,000, you get a really good return. And you know, three to 5,000 a month is uh, you know, kind of the, the tipping point. Particularly if you got significant power usage in the 4 to 9 p.m. time period. This is where we have peak rates in California. Peak rates in California in this time period are going from 40 to 65 cents a kilowatt hour. Massive jump in cost to consume energy in the 4 to 6 or 4 to 9 p.m. time period. This makes sense really only if you've got good operation for PV. You're going to you're going to essentially fire this cost savings exercise with, with inexpensive PV and you have to have a place to put it. For a commercial installation, that takes a fair amount of room. These are sizable installations. So you need ample rooftop or carport space for PV installation. Luckily in most industrial buildings in California, you've got a lot of rooftop. And that rooftop space can be used to generate a lot of PV. The other ones, if you're using high power equipment or adding EV chargers to your business for your employees. EV chargers will consume a lot of energy. They'll put a lot of peak demand on and they can dramatically increase your, uh, your power consumption and your power bill. So, I mean, th that's kind of the, the profiles of the business. And that's frankly an awful lot of businesses in, in Southern California. I would think so. Um, I had, I was, I was speaking to one of our uh, commercial brokers yesterday, and he brought up um, uh, homeowners associations uh, that have lots of common area. You know, would this would this be something that could be applied there? Because he said um, he he owns a building actually, and he said his common area bills, um, his electric is running about twenty five hundred a month uh, just to maintain common areas. Is that something that uh, this would be applied to? These can be applied to a lot of those. A lot of this comes down to a very simple thing. You, the, the, you, all the power utilities get what's called 15 minute interval data for a meter. So they have the energy uses, usage for every 15 minutes throughout the year. A quick download of that data and running it through an economic analyzer will then tell you how much you can save. And it's really, this is done by, by analytics, relatively powerful analytics. Uh, and it really depends on how much usage they have during what time of the day. Okay. You know, common areas is going to be mostly lighting. Yeah. Unless you have pools or equipment or, you know, or buildings that you're running, then, you know, you're right on the break. At $2,500 a month, you're right on the break, you know, and it would probably be worth downloading the power bill and doing the analysis. Yeah. So, okay. okay. Next, Justin. So, when you look at this, every one of the key things is, well, how do I really save money? How does this work? It, it, you know, people look at this, it's fairly obvious with PV, I just convert the sunshine to power and it somehow saves me money. But to understand the basics of how the, the, the simple math behind this is really comes down to just a couple numbers. The key one is self-generation with PV costs you about seven cents a kilowatt hour over the life of an install. Put in PV panels, they're gonna last you 20, 25 years. You will, it will cost you about seven cents a kilowatt hour for that power generator over the life of your PV panels. Okay, if you add batteries, this goes up to 10 cents, maybe a little more than 10 cents a kilowatt hour as an adder on that. Energy costs in California is 30 cents on the average from your big suppliers and going up. So the big thing you say, I can generate it myself for seven cents a kilowatt hour, or I can pay 30 cents a kilowatt hour to the utility company to get it. That 23 cents a kilowatt hour differential is what drives the cost savings. It's a, you know, and that differential is getting bigger. 
PV costs are going down, power costs are going up. You know, that's where this comes from. That's what, that's what drives the savings. The key thing here is understand that peak power in California right now, which is 4 p.m. to 9 p.m., is now running 45 cents to 65 cents a kilowatt hour. Now that's a huge differential compared to your seven cents. Problem is you don't have any sunshine. So you, can't, you cannot get that differential with the solar panels alone. You have to have batteries and to shift the solar power from the middle of the day that you generate your PV panels into this peak power time period is an is a application called peak shifting, and you're saving, you know, as much as 50, 40, 50 cents a kilowatt hour for the energy you can shift from midday to, you know, that, that, that 4 to 9 p.m. time period. This is particularly critical for people who run a second shift. If you got a manufacturing or commercial operation or high energy usage with a set on a second shift, this makes you very, very good candidate for these kind of programs. Now, uh, the other thing on this, if without batteries, you can put the solar on and discharge it to the grid, but the new Cal ISO, the new net energy meeting schemes are only going to pay you five to seven cents at the most for power return to the grid. So if you overgenerate and return it to the grid, the best you can get is essentially what it costs you or slightly less than what it costs you to generate that power. So putting in a lot of solar and saying I'm going to sell it back to the grid in California is not a very cost effective, not a very cost effective uh, strategy. So how do you actually save money doing this then? Well, you save money by you install enough PV to offset your daytime usage and charge your batteries. You have to have enough to do both. So the PV replaces 20 cents a kilowatt hour energy in the middle of the day with seven cents a kilowatt hour from your PV. So you save some there. With enough battery capacity to reduce your peak usage during the four to 9 p.m. period, you replace 45 cents a kilowatt hour energy with 10 cents a kilowatt hour energy from your batteries. That's what you're doing. Uh, most of these systems need some intelligent energy management system to know when to charge, when to discharge, how to reap the financial benefits. So with these systems, you get an energy management system as a, as a benefit, as a side benefit. That allow you to monitor your energy usage, scoped it for years. So this is just not something you get once. This gives you tr tremendous insight into your energy usage and allows you to uh, do cost-saving projects for years to come. So the key thing on this and the money on making part of this is to get the right size for the system to optimize your return on investment. If it's too big, you spent too much capital money, it takes you too long to pay it off. Too small, you went through all the pains of the project and a lot of the overhead of the project, and you don't generate enough benefit. So one of the key things on doing this that uh, Burge has the capability is the economic analysis to make sure you get the system right size to maximize your benefit. How easy is it to modify after you put the system on and let's say um, they, they start using more energy uh, in a few years and they need to add more panels, I guess, <coughs> would be the solution to create more to get into the battery. So how easy is it to just kind of say, okay, this is the size now, but you know, in three years, we're expecting we need to expand this out, you know, 25% or something like that to account for higher energy use. Most of these systems are easy to expand if, if, they're, if they're thought out at the start. Uh, there's two issues to managing this long-term. One of them is, you have a programmable energy management system. You can choose to change when you consume your energy and whether you consume it from batteries or PV or from the grid. That's a simple matter of optimizing the control system. And that's a very quick, easy thing to do that can be done once you start collecting data. Because with this data, everybody changes their energy use um, profile over time. 
so you can do that. That's that's easy one. You can usually add more PV, add more batteries, are both fairly easy to do. If you think you're going to have an expansion, then you want to make your inverters bigger. Inverters, an inverter capacity is one of the cheapest parts of the system. If you have the adequate inverter size, you can just add PV panels and add batteries fairly easily, as long as the inverters were installed with a little bit of oversize to them. So usually what happens if you're close, uh, we will recommend optimizing the system on over, making sure you don't skimp on inverter size just for that reason. And these things are easy to, uh, these things are easy to install. Okay. Uh, you know, and upgrade. So there's really, you have to understand the pieces of a solar and storage project. You've got to get the PV. That's optimized for your loads, optimized for your energy consumption profile. Uh, then you need to install a PV inverter. So this is the, the inverter that converts the DC power from your PV panels to AC. Uses it for running your business or charging your batteries. With that, you'll get the energy monitor management systems. These things control the energy flow, measures where everything's going. Gives you history. Uh, you can put instrumentation on big power usage, but you can really control the system, optimizes the cost savings. Over time, you will do a lot of optimization and reduce a lot of your power consumption just from having the data and the controls from the energy management system. Then you add the batteries and the bidirectional inverter to charge and discharge the batteries. And that's really taking direction from the energy management system. You know, batteries are relatively dumb. They just store the energy, but the energy management system knows when and how to charge and discharge those to minimize your, your energy bill and does a very good job of giving you the data. So once you've got that inverter and the battery bank installed, then you can turn this on and really start becoming your, you know, essentially uh, your self-managed uh, energy consumer. Um, People get very addicted to the data coming off of these. It tells you, gives you tremendous insight, uh, particularly businesses that have high power bills as a significant part of their cost structure. You will have uh, lots of data you've never had in the past. So uh, that's a really big benefit from these. So here's kind of the, just the overview for people of what a project would look like. The first thing you do is essentially do a financial modeling. You get the you get the detailed power bills, the fifteen minute interval thing. You put in uh, the data for an entire year of consumption for the past year of consumption, and then you essentially use that to model with the projections for the solar and usage for the next year, and calculate the the energy profile going forward. This is. Relatively quick and easy, this is a service that Verge can do for customers. You just have to get the data, do a very quick analysis. So you either meet the financial targets or not. And if the customer says, I got a seven-year rate of return or a five-year rate of return, this is literally a couple hour or less session to decide whether you actually meet the financial targets. If you actually meet the the financial targets you want to go ahead. Then we have to do a site inspection, make sure you know where to put the batteries, where to put the storage, how to hook it up to your existing power system, do an engineering review. We can do the project timeline and finalize a bid. Uh, with that bid, you then have the financial analysis, the cost of the project, a contract can be signed and equipment can be ordered. That takes about six weeks, maybe less from the time you get the initial data if you want to do this in a hurry. But that contract signed, you put the equipment on order, there's about a four month lead time for the equipment. And once the equipment arrives, it's a relatively short installation process. A couple of weeks, you got to get the PV on the roof, the batteries and inverters installed, the grid kite connections done, then it's gonna take you another four to six weeks to get the inspections done, get permission to turn it on, get it commissioned, 
get it initially up and running and get the control system optimized. So you will see a return from the time you start this process when you first start seeing savings will be about six months. Maybe a little more, will probably be less than six months. So this is kind of the time period that you, uh, that someone needs to plan on for doing these kind of projects. They're pretty straightforward. They look like a, any other kind of kind of improvement commercial project. So that, that's, uh, that's kind of the overview of the technology in the project. Don't need to worry about the batteries. They're pretty proven. Don't need to worry about the inverters, the PV. That stuff is, is pretty industry standard components. Burge will take care of those and babysit the process. But this is roughly what you look at for a, for a, a commercial construction project. Now, have you, and maybe you don't know the answer, I don't know, um, putting a system on a house versus on a commercial building, have you found permitting to take longer, more stringent, anything like that, or is it city by city? It's really city by city. The local authority having jurisdiction can make that really easy, make that pretty hard, make it yeah. pretty quick. Okay, or make it fairly drawn out. There is a lot of incentives, a lot of requirements to do this in California. So the permitting process uh, is something you have to work out kind of locale by locale. Um, usually it can all be done in while you're waiting for the equipment. So once you get the system going, you order the equipment and the permitting process starts and it takes well less than the lead time for the equipment. Okay. So I'll pass this off to Paul Silverwood. Paul can kind of do a run through on how the, the financial stuff and, and how you do the financial calculations, because this is really a financial driven project and really in the details. So thanks, John. This I'm Paul Silverwood. I'm I spent the last 30 years in high-tech equipment um, engineering and manufacturing and 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 that includes energy storage systems, um, both for residential and for industrial systems. And um, what we find is, like John alluded to, the, the questions about how to do this kind of has some rules of thumb about the size of the system, the size of your electric bill, and so forth. For industrial customers, it's really pretty critical that that their decision-making process is not only is it feasible, but when is the return on payback? Now, what you'll find with residential customers is that oftentimes the return on payback um, uh, isn't that big of a factor because you're actually doing some renewable generation and you're really reducing your uh, your energy footprint, which is pretty critical for a lot of homeowners. So they might be happy with a 15 to 20 year payback with, with this equipment, uh, as long as they're making a difference. With industrial customers, it tends to be different. It tends to have to have a, a return on investment. They're, they're ruled by accountants and, and uh, that's not a bad thing, but it, it changes the dynamics. So what happens is it's really critical that we can show a project from the beginning of the project through a return on investment, how overall the project can actually save money for a customer. And this becomes a really critical point. And you can't just do rules of thumb for customers like this. You have to have real analytics and a real financial feasibility study. So what we do is we take the, the, um, uh, the data that you have used electricity for the last year, and we input that into this model. So we have 15 minute, minute incremental data. It comes from the utility. Um, and that gives you an accurate picture of what usage you've had over the last year. We take the utility rate structure, which is oftentimes different. Usually utilities have a, a time of use rate structure, time of use A or B or TOU. Uh, 13, some some segment of a utility time of use structure. Um, and then we take the power bill and your demand, uh, and we overlay that um, with the solar that is re that you usually see. So we take this solar estimation for your location, and this is NREL data. So it's it's really accurate at the local level about how much solar you had for the last year, and it projects that forward then. And it gives you, 
you know, the good days and bad days. And, and it helps us size the solar renewable for the best con self-consumption. Because you don't want to put too much solar on. That's just a waste of, of extra money. But you want to put enough to be able to generate enough power during the, the midday so that you can transfer that extra energy off to the um, uh, evening high rate structures in your bin. Then the third step is we then optimize the battery uh, storage element of this. So we, we can take a battery and we can charge it at low cost rates in the middle of the night. We can charge or we can dispatch to the business or the home during the morning hours when there's no solar and then when there's high solar and you have excess energy that you're you're generating, you can charge the battery up and keep that for that evening dispatch for that expensive peak rate period. So this optimization process takes a tremendous amount of data input, and then it outputs uh, feasibility reports, um, uh, cost analysis reports, and, and it gives you uh, what you should expect from utility billing, your demand charges, all of the avoided cost with your peak shifting uh, on your energy, it gives you a financial savings and a return on investment, which is going to be really critical in your decision making process. So um, at the end of the day, you have a fairly extensive report. So Burge takes all this information, gives you a report, and then from an industrial standpoint, they take that typically, um, it's a capital investment, so they'll take that to the board of their financial uh, team and determine whether or not this is actually gonna pay for itself. On the next slide, we talk about why this is really exciting in California. So where, where Burge has been doing construction, they can take these costs and actually add in incentives that are, uh, given to you basically from the federal government from the state of California and give you a, a very nice return on investment on a particular project. So what we typically see is you add your PV and your energy storage and have this initial cost and it includes everything including reg regulations and install and all your permitting cost is your, your in, internal cost. Then you back off in your calculation, your demand cost, your utility bills, the savings, the avoided costs that you're going to get, and the state and federal incentives. As John said, typically, your uh, investment tax credits can be 30% over, this, over the um, uh, course of the project. And a lot of these steps, S-CHIP in California, the federal um, I ITC and the makers, depreciation bonuses, that's good for either the first year or the first three to five years. So you can get a payback from the federal government on your taxes pretty aggressively in there. And you can save 30 to 50% of your cost reduction on this thing. What we often see with projects is a five year, a less than five year projects on, on really obvious, um, but in, in other areas that you can see a five to seven to eight year payback period, which over a life of a 20 year project is actually a good investment for a particular company at that point. So we're talking, if you have a six, six say five or $6,000 electric bill a month in an in industrial site, um, you can have over a million dollars of savings over the time of the project just on energy rates alone. It's, it's pretty significant. So then and that's, finally just, Burge, that's just today's energy rates too. That's not even accounting for what's going to probably come down the pipeline in upcoming years, I would assume. Well, that's true. And, and so there's a couple uh, changes that you always watch out for is, is utilities are always changing their time of use uh, rate structures. And that's, that's an easy way to get a little bit more money for um, you know, the distribution and, and all the, the high costs that they have to pay out. Um, they can change the time of use without actually announcing an increase in kilowatt dollars per kilowatt hour that they charge a customer in there. So your rate structures change all the time too inside your 
your uh, your electric bill. So you got to watch that. The nice thing about what Burge does in this financial is it takes all of the rate structures from all the major utilities in California, and it keeps up with that and and does a projection on what that should be for the next year and the next 10 years. So it does a pretty decent, it does a very nice job of actually calculating out some of the increased cost. Uh, so we always say that, that when we're looking at this from an investment standpoint or a payback, when we produce the report, you're going to be pretty confident that that Burge report is accurate and it's going to be probably less uh, you, you, you're going to have a faster payback because of the increased cost in the future, electricity cost, than we're actually projecting right now. So it's only going to get better from this. So, so what happens is the return on investment gives you a full financial report. It's about a 20-page financial report on your payback. And this is a summary page on what it usually looks at. It takes into account the uh, internal rate of return, LCOE is, is levelized cost of energy. So taking all into account your construction costs, your demand charges, all of these things cost you money to the utility at a, at a particular levelized cost of energy. And that's usually a number that is hard to find on your electric bill. Uh, you have to do some calculations on it, but that's a pretty key bill. Um, your your overall cost. Now, in this particular project we were looking at was a four hundred thousand dollar project. Its payback was six years. Um, your total payback payments were only totaled three hundred thousand dollars because you had one hundred twenty seven thousand dollars of incentives in there, and the life savings over your electric bill alone was one point three million dollars over that. So this is considered one of the best investments a company can make today in in any of their their capital improvement projects that they're dealing with now the same kind of analysis works with utility with uh, residential homes as well you you may not get quite the project payback but you certainly get a pretty significant percentage of utility bill savings over the life so it gets to be pretty exciting on here and finally we kind of anticipated the questions that you're going to be asking about what is net metering and what, you know, where is it going? What's happening to um, net metering? You hear a lot of stories about NEM2, net meter, net energy metering 2, and they're, they're mothballing that and they're going to a net energy metering, metering 3. So what's the difference between NEM2 and NEM3? Did it pass? It did pass, um, and it's going to go into effect this year. And it was, um, so if you have a client that already is on net metering two, they won't be forced to take net metering three. It's, it's going to be a, a, a grandfathered in. So the net metering allows you as a homeowner or a business owner to generate energy. And if you generate excess energy, you can actually sell that back to the utility company for a rate. Net metering two was actually somewhat lucrative. It, it was a pretty good payback in there. Uh, net metering three reduced that payback by about 75%. So as it stands right now, I don't believe that a lot of people are gonna take advantage of net metering three and sell their power back to the utility that they overgenerate because um, it just doesn't cost, pay, pay that much. now. If you can store that energy and use it against your utility bill during your high peak rates, uh, that's a huge win for homeowners and for business owners in there. So net metering is going to be a pretty important deal. Um, for your homeowners you're asking, if you have a project and you want to participate in net metering, you have to have that project papered by April of this year. I think it's uh, April 13th is the date that you have to have it have it papered, and then you can take advantage of net metering too. After April 13th, if you start your project, you're automatically going to be in net metering three in there. But uh, so in really in summary, your utility rates are going up. The amount of money that you're getting back if you overgenerate from your PV is reducing dramatically. And there's no 
there's really no way that you can generate enough energy to sell back to the utility to pay for itself. You really have to now store that energy into an energy storage system and use that against your higher rates. So we, we anticipated this might be one of your more common questions and we put up a summary slide in here to kind of explain what net metering two versus net metering three is. And with yeah, that- I have to say most, most homeowners that I, you know, I sell homes with uh, solar on actually don't have battery systems in there. So what, it, it sounds it like a, after April, it's gonna be much more advantageous to have that added in when you're adding solar. That's right. Most solar systems are, are fairly inexpensive to add on, and you were paid a fairly good amount. You generally had a long payback period. It was a 15 to 20 year payback period, but there was a payback period. And most homeowners like the idea of self-generating, so that was okay. They, they didn't lose money on the process. With net metering three, though, when they put PV on their house, they're actually going to still be losing money now. So, and with the incremental cost of adding storage, uh, you can save a tremendous amount of money. So it's a real game changer for a homeowner that wants to really do uh, self-generation. And uh, the, the, the key is, now you need to have a company that's competent in not only Ha navigating all of the energy costs and all the values there, but actually in, in construction, because a majority of the construction methods um, are, are not that difficult, but a lot of construction companies aren't experts in this at all. And so that's really why it's exciting to have companies like Burge who actually does this work and understands the payback and understands what a, uh, a customer is going through when they decide that they're going to go ahead and do PV and storage and what that means. And um, the, like I said, the payback is great. You just have to make sure you can navigate all of the, the um, construction issues and the site permitting and all that stuff. And that's where Burge really brings their expertise in. So with that, uh, let me turn it over to Brett Burge and he'll describe a little more on what's the process. Thanks, guys. Um, so yeah, like I mean, like you've heard, the process on the whole deal it's 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 rather significant on the on you know as far as the detail goes. Um, and being a general contractor, and you know, we've done development and real estate ourselves. Um, you know, we've found that a one-stop shop is really the way to go. So our our model kind of spins off of the general construction side where you know we tried to bring the best partners best you know added value to our customers so the way that we're moving into the energy space is exactly that in mind so we're going to be handling all aspects of the project you know from the design permitting sorry design and engineering the permitting electrical tie-in installation and integration of the system manage and coordinate the solar install so we've partnered you know and are going to be partnering with you know one or more um, companies that really fit our values you know aren't like i said just a product we want to go the solution based route we want to make sure that at the end of the day it's not just a product for the customer and they're not happy we want to make sure we're looking down the road and that it's a feasible project for them and something that they're going to be comfortable with five ten years down the road with um, and then offering remote monitoring and service. So the, the cycle doesn't end at the end of construction. We will be offering the monitoring uh, in-house at some level. And then um, we also have another partner as well who we're going to be outsourcing to. So it's really like John was uh, kind of pointing at was, you know, we, we take a look at the system, you can modify the system and stuff. So all, that, all that's going to be brought in-house, you know, can be managed under Burge Corp. One of the, the last parts to the equation is the recycling. Um, you know, there, there's, there's a lot of concern behind where the raw materials are going to, whether it's, you know, landfill or recycling, where, what's going to happen with the batteries, the solar panels, that kind of stuff. So we're very in tune with, with under, that understanding of that. And so we're, we're, we found and are looking also, again, for, you know, multiple people who we can source to for the recycling and making sure that the on-site when it gets taken off-site is handled correctly. Um, so, you know, we value uh, at Burge 
our customers. And we want to make sure that it is a success and that it is a project that's going to, you know, help bring costs down, you know, help the homeowners, you know, or, or, or sorry, even business owners be comfortable. Um, and so that's kind of the main goal here is to make sure that, you know, it's a one-stop shop and we've got your best interest in mind. Um, so that's kind of the, you know, the, the, the full overview. I think we ran pretty close to that that hour and we wanted to end with, you know, any questions that you have. Um, we do have some contact info. So John Aslam will be heading up any, any sales on our end. Um, so if you want to reach out to him and then also you can reach out to Justin, um, any questions that maybe you think of down the road, um, feel free. We're very open and we like to discuss this stuff. So, uh, you know, if we want to set up conversations afterwards as well, we're open to that. Um, but for now, Travis, I mean, if you guys have any questions or, you want to open it up? Um, if anybody has any, you can throw them down in the chat. Um, I had a few kind of along the way. Those were those were what I had. Um, as far as from you know, I guess um, from a, a real estate agent, commercial real estate <laughs> agent standpoint, you know, referring customers over is there is there any benefit for us to refer customers over to you? Yeah. Um, Okay. Yeah, we're we're working right now on on a referral program. Um, so that that will be something that and, and once we get that input, you know, we'll definitely shoot it out, especially, you know, uh, to everybody who's on right now. Um, but yeah, there will be incentives, you know, behind, um, you know, referring customers, you know, if we go to contract, then yes, of course. Okay. And we do have one. Does the lease increase yearly? I'm going to throw that one back to uh, Paul. Yeah, so when we can do uh, calculations on lease applications, um, uh, you can actually uh, run the program right through a banking system if you want and do a, a more of a traditional loan um, or a cash payout. From a business standpoint, typically you're going to see a cash payout because they're going to take advantage of the, the heavy investments that uh, incentives that you're going to get back from the federal government or the state government and then apply that directly back to the project from a from a homeowner standpoint typically you're going to lease that project and you sign a leasing contract just like a regular lease so it's going to be a, a yearly payment and those lease numbers aren't are not going to go up your you know, you know your um, your insurance and and all that stuff may uh, just over the life of the project, but the lease project is going to be very straightforward, a very uh, simple business uh, uh, commercial lease application for an upgrade or a home lease um, upgrade system that you can get almost anywhere. And um, if um, if uh, if it makes some sense to actually do the leasing project right through Burge, then certainly we'll consider that at this point. There are from a financial standpoint, there's a lot of ways to go on this, but no, you shouldn't have any surprises on, on lease costs for a project. And, and just real quick, um, you know, we, even though our focus mainly is on commercial, kind of like our general, uh, our, our construction division, we do residential. So I don't want to just say we're doing commercial. Um, we, we have done and still do some residential stuff. So on the install for, for the battery side, if it is residential, don't hesitate to contact us as well. We will, you know, we'll help facilitate what we can. Um, and, and like, like we mentioned, if the, if the financials don't work out on the residential side, they don't, but if they do, um, it is a project. So we'll okay. definitely take a look. What about adding to maybe an existing system that, I don't know, five years old or something like that, and they want to add in energy storage? Is yeah, that, uh, that's that's or what, 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 how does that work? <laughs> it, it can be. We're actually looking at a potential client right now on that exact matter on the commercial side. Um, we're doing a, a study on the existing system because they're self consuming all their electricity right now with the PV array that they have. So we're looking at what what's the increase in cost for the PV side with you know putting in the battery to make it make sense with a good or you know good roi so there it, it makes it a little more complicated but we like we like that you know quote unquote mess so that's yeah. the fun part of the job um, so, so travis if i can jump in this is paul we we have 
inquiries quite often on adding batteries because of the higher utility rates and the lack of you know investment incentives from net metering that's coming for so customers typically will look at their rooftop and say i got room for another 30 percent power generation on my roof i've liked what the solar's done so far now let me add in a little more storage and let me add in a battery too because in the next five years, I projected I'm going to buy an EV, and I don't want to be charging the EV in the evening when I get home at the really high cost. I want to uh, take that solar power and use that for my EV charging, and that's going to be a heavy charge, and there is a lot of inquiries coming in just for that scenario. So it's going to be an exciting time, I think, um, in California, especially for EVs and energy storage and on homes and businesses. That's, a, that's actually a really good point. I mean, everybody, you know, drives it around all day and then charges it at night. So um, that's that's actually a really good point. Yeah, just to comment on that for you, Travis, adding batteries to an existing PV installation that does not overgenerate PV doesn't do you much good. So usually you'll have to expand the PV array when you add the battery to, to get the benefits of the battery. And you know, as people move into EVs, every time you add an EV, you almost double the energy consumption in your household. So there's a lot of incentive to, if you want to add EVs and not increase your power bill dramatically, you want to add PV and add a battery. And yeah. the payback on that's usually longer than it is for a commercial project. There can be good financial return on that, you know, even in a residential installation. Okay. And and one thing too on on the overall picture with the tax incentives that can be kind of a daunting task, um, and it usually is pushed off to you know a, a CPA to make sure that you're covering all those. That is one thing that we're looking at um, to kind of put together a you know kind of a helpful guide uh, so that you you don't go into it thinking that okay here's a capital investment up front, but I got to wait X amount of time you know for the tax incentives to kick in. And what tax incentives are they and, and all that. So we're working with our team, our CPAs and stuff to put together a little program to really kind of take all that, that equation out. So up front, we can offer up the suggestions uh, of, of where you need to go, what you need to look at. So it kind of going back to the one-stop shop, we want to make sure that it, you know, we're, we're taking a lot of the stress and, and work off of, you know, uh, the client's lap. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that you're not just, uh, you know, throwing solar on there to throw it on there and you're actually making sure it is going to be a benefit to the uh, the owner, whether it's commercial or, you know, res. So, correct. All right. Well, I really appreciate you coming on. You know, we we were talking a couple of weeks ago about this and I was trying to yeah. wrap my head around it. But now, I you know, I definitely understand uh, what the benefit is, kind of what's coming down the pipeline here in California. Mm -hmm. Um and why this really makes a lot of sense so it does and, and we appreciate you giving us the time to come on and and again um don't hesitate to reach out and especially even you know questions on the residential side too you know it still falls in line and okay. so we can help out with whatever we can all right Looking forward sounds to good it. well i appreciate your time and um, i'm sure i'm going to see you around so yeah um Hope you have a, a great rest of the week and uh, thanks Hello. for the info here. Yeah. All right. Thank you all. All right. Appreciate it. Bye.